It's the highest point on Earth, Mount Chomolongma on China's Tibetan Plateau, known internationally as Everest. Every climbing season from April to May, hundreds of mountaineers gather here at the base camp, 5,200 meters above sea level, for a chance to stand on top of the world. De Tingno Zhu is one of them. I grew up in a township at the foot of Chumolongma. I yearn to reach the top. I'm very grateful that there is such a big force of nature in our Tingru County. Without it, I probably would not have so many rich experiences. Experiences that others dare not dream of. De Ting has conquered Chomolongma four times. In 2008, for the Beijing Summer Games, he was part of a team that escorted the Olympic torch to the summit. This time, he's on a new mission. He's leading a team of 14 to collect weather data and ice and snow samples from the world's tallest peak. This is unprecedented from a scientific perspective. Zhao Huabiao is a meteorologist who needs this kind of data. Most scientists like him are good mountain climbers themselves. But the Chomolama summit is known to be elusive, even to the experienced. We've been in close communication. We teach them how to set up and operate equipment, as well as the precautions, so the installation process will go smoothly. De Qing himself is not just a trained climber. With a master's from China's University of Geosciences while mulling on a doctorate, he's considered a first-generation mountaineer slash plateau scientist in China. He leads rounds of rehearsals, making sure no detail is overlooked, including how to bag a section of ice core, a water bottle standing in for the real thing. The equipment we used in the past were a challenge to high-altitude research work because they were big and heavy. Now we have the best, lightest and most convenient equipment. The team ascends from base camp. Each of the 14 teammates shoulders five kilos of equipment on top of their supplies and oxygen. In a week, De Ting is set to stand on the top of the world for a fifth time to uncover for the first time some of Earth's highest secrets. The team will have a one-hour window before harsh conditions kick in. But once the wind gets too strong, it will be very dangerous. Our hands and feet will become susceptible to frostbite. Dangers he knows all too well. He tells me how he once almost lost a finger. After about one minute of exposure, my finger became numb and pale because it lost blood supply. It was frozen. On my way down, I knocked it on the rocks until it started to bleed. Now that fingertip is hardened and has lost its print, a reminder of the risks of the job. But he says he's living his dream. I don't think I'm risking my life. It's an adventure. With every climb, we prepare and we plan. We are simply exploring the scientific possibilities of the future.